Today on this special edition of Winter Close-Up, we examine the root of the gas shortage that hit the Carolinas. And we look for the answer to the question, is it vandalism or art? As the election campaign were winding down, Vice President Joe Biden made a stop in Rock Hill. These stories and more on the best of Winter Close-Up. Welcome to the special edition of Winter Close-Up, where we are bringing you the highlights of the semester's news. My name is Victor Volius. And I'm Kelsey McKeska. Before the election results came in, Rock Hill was able to hear what the United States Vice President Joe Biden had to say during his second stop in South Carolina to campaign for Hillary Clinton. I was there as he got the people ready to vote. Just a week before Election Day, Joe Biden took the stage alongside Congressman Clyburn and helped campaign for his personal friend, congressional candidate Fran Person. You know, I would not be standing here today if it wasn't for Vice President Biden. Sharon Browning Jenkins, who works at the center, believes the event was a learning experience that brought the community together. So we met some great people, and that's what makes, as far as I'm concerned, our nation a great nation because we met a lot of people from different walks of life, but we all were focusing on one event, and that's to make our nation, our state, our city a better place in which to live. Biden touched base on key issues concerning young adults. Early education is the answer, and access to college is the future. So folks, there's so much we can do. Biden was in Charlotte later on that day for his Vote Early rally. For more information on the South Carolina Democratic Party and future events, visit scdp.org. Something else you might have noticed in Rock Hill outside of politics is gas. There was a, a fluctuation in gas prices over a number of weeks. Colonial Pipelines closed down after it leaked over 250 gallons of gas in Shelby County, Alabama. The pipeline supplies gas to several states and some places saw as much as a 15 cent increase in gas prices. The shortage was not only hard on local gas station owners, but on gas customers as well. It's been real difficult to find gas in Rock Hill, and because of that I haven't been able to go anywhere. It's messing up my album sales. It's messing up my YouTube sales. I can't hardly market my music. Rock Hill gas station ran completely dry while other raised prices in order to prevent it. Exxon on Cherry Road said the gas shortage not only affected their gas sales but also the sales inside the store. Um, sales completely plummeted the day after the leak. Colonial pipelines eventually fixed the leak and things returned to normal. Speaking of normal, things have not been for Winthrop's campus. A hurtful act was committed at Tillman Hall that caused a series of artwork to go viral among local media. Orlandis Gary was at Tillman and files this report. Winthrop's Tillman Hall was recently vandalized by an individual who would like to remain anonymous. A black figure hanging from a noose and a sign across the Tillman Hall saying Tillman Legacy was done by the student. Many Winthrop students took offense to this. Um, it's very sad. Um, it's upsetting that they would do that, you know, it's kind of, like, this campus is so, like, diverse and so uh, welcoming, so, like, to actually see that on campus is kind of shocking. And I think it just adds more fuel to, like, a racial flame that's kind of been building since Trump's election. Um, I know personally on campus I've been able to feel the tension. Um, you know, because Winthrop is very diverse, and I feel like we've worked hard to, like, you know, become more one and more unified, and I feel like with that act it might have set you know, us back some might have like created more of a division. In actuality, the pieces were supposed to be seen as artwork by the Association of Artists for a Change to inform people on the reasons the name of the building needs to be changed. But I think that if that misunderstanding was important to take get us to this point. I think that if everyone understood what the artwork meant right then and there, uh, we would not be having this conversation. On top of the fact that I think that fear and uh, initial shock is extremely important. Uh, where would we be without uh, that shock, fear, and outrage in other works that have provided social justice and change? Although it was said the act was not committed to harm anyone, the university is still deciding the precautions to take in handling the situation. I'm Orlandis Gary, with their close-up. 
The university will continue to offer counseling, informational sessions, and open forums for students and community members who feel the need to help find a solution. The world is a large place, but the city of Rock Hill found a way to put it all in one room. And we'll take in the sight and sounds of Latin America as we continue with the best of Winter Close-Up. Welcome back to the best of Winter Close-Up. World-famous gospel artist Kurt Franklin came to the South Carolina State Fair and gave the audience a thrilling performance. 5,000 plus people came out to praise and worship and to see Kurt Franklin live in concert for the first time. Man, I had an incredible time. I love the people here, man. I'm going to go ride some rides. I had a good time. I know I'm a little stanky, but it's all Gucci, man. I love it. I love y'all. Thank y'all for supporting me. Audience members danced, sang, and shared some laughs throughout the entirety of the show while having the chance to experience the fair. The state fair is long over with for this year, but it will be back next October with many more performances and acts to see. There were more performances in Rock Hill as the city's Community Relations Council and the International Center for York County teamed up for a celebration of global learning, race and equality at Boyd Hill Recreation Center. Reporter Janae Reese grabbed her passport and took the world tour. <laughs> Music, fashion, and food from across the world transformed the Boiled Hill Recreation Center into a cultural hub to celebrate diversity and give children a passport to learn. Well, I think it's important for all of us as human beings to have an international perspective. You know, it's a big world, and there are many different cultures, many different languages, and many different people from a lot of different places. From Japan to Colombia and places in between, over 10 different countries highlighted what made their nation unique, whether it's through using sound, dance, or clothes. Uh, they're handmade. They were made in Barranquilla, Colombia. And yeah, I'm bottling them for a friend so that everyone in the community sees that like there's a lot of different cultures. The event used fashion to show young students the diversity in clothes so they can step inside other cultures and embrace race and equality in an interactive way. Attendees not only got to see and hear talents from across the world, they had a chance to have the world in their hands and taste food from Brazil, Kenya, and even Japan. They have actually food tables here, which is a great way of showcasing people's culture. I think food is the gateway to anyone's culture. It's not every day a child can see the world in two hours and learn the importance of embracing diversity. Janae Reese, went the Close Up. Equality Week is a family learning event that happens every September. Keep a lookout next year for more events. Families were also invited to Winter for the Family Day Festival on campus. They came from all over to show support to their students' education at Winter. What a better way to celebrate them with a family picnic. I'm having a good time at Winter. Those who participated in the events were truly satisfied by the outcome. Family Day is an annual event at Winthrop, so continue to look out at winthrop.edu for next year's date. Children are also putting what they learn from others to the test by spending their afternoon selling lemonade and popcorn for charity. While many school children may spend their time indoors catching up on cartoons and video games, Nathan, Emma, and Guy spent their Sunday afternoon giving back to the community. We knew we were going to sell lemonade, but we weren't sure what, what else. It started out with the idea of ice cream, and mm -hmm. then it turned to brownies and cookies, and then it turned to just brownies, and then it turned to popcorn. Oh, Seeing children being active and engaging brought the neighborhood together. Because so many Winthrop students stopped by, the children decided to donate what they earned back to the university. I think it's really sweet that the kids are giving back to the community. I agree, and I think it's really great that they're getting involved at such a young age, yeah. and I know it's going to help them in the future. Yeah. Now let's toss it over to Lexi DeMoya and see what she has for some of Winthrop's best feature stories. Lexi? Thanks, Victor. Coming up after the break, we'll take a look at how one local high school is working to prevent brain trauma and why exercise is important for the elderly. Welcome back to Winthrop Close Up. I'm Lexi DeMoya. Age is just a number to the seniors of Carolina Gardens Assisted Living Home. Reporter Ashley Briggs helps explain how the elderly gets physical. 
Went up sore held a 30 minute workout class in honor of healthy aging for the month of September. Together and bring them down. Well, September is Healthy Aging Month, so they gave me the idea that just because certain people are a certain age, you shouldn't stop exercising or getting out and working out, so we bring the workout to them. Sit to be Fit started as a low-impact aerobics class at the YMCA, but the class changed so seniors can exercise while sitting down. One student says she is passionate about socializing with the elderly, so she had to be here. Well, I know from experience that most people don't come and visit the elderly, so to get to interact with them, get them excited, and to work out at the same time is like, it's rewarding for me and them. Agentcare.com suggests three 30-minute workouts for the elderly. Upper body workouts, leg workouts, and to help cope with arthritis, crumble a bag. All of this is helpful because the more you move, the more active you are, the better your system is because you keep everything working. If you sit still all the time, you just get stiff. These exercises allow seniors to do power-ups and cool-downs from their walkers and wheelchairs. Ashley Briggs, Winthrop Close-Up. To learn more about SOAR's upcoming events with the elderly or anyone else in the community, visit soar11.wixsite.com. Not only do the elderly put their health and safety first, but so do high school football teams. It's been a topic of discussion and inspired the Hollywood film Concussion. Chronic traumatic encephalopathy, or CTE, is an insidious disease to the brain caused by repeated blows to the head. CTE's discovery is credited to Dr. Bennett Amlahu, who described the brain as being sitting in fluid completely disconnected from the skull. This explains why symptoms of concussions like dizziness and faintness have been shown by many football players. The whole philosophy of the game is different now. We don't hit very much in practice anymore. Almost everything we do, um, we stay up off the, off the ground. We started a new thing um, that USA Football has started that's called Heads Up Tackling. So we have about five uh, different um, techniques that we use, learning how to hit with the front of the shoulder pad instead of hitting with the head. CTE brings awareness to brain trauma in high school football players. Symptoms can begin to appear months, years, or even decades after trauma has ended. Currently, CTE can be diagnosed after death by brain tissue analysis. Please visit a doctor if you feel that you are experiencing any signs of CTE. Many doctors also suggest different forms of exercise, yoga being one of them. If you are thinking about taking your workout to the next level, you might want to visit a place in Uptown Charlotte that I stretched into. Rooftop 210 at the Epicenter in downtown Charlotte has been offering rooftop yoga for the past year and continues to bring relaxing vibes to the Queen City. I like that one that it's outside. Um, I've done a few yoga classes where it's been the hot yoga inside. I think up here you get more of that city atmosphere. The yoga class is available to the public on Monday nights from 6.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. and the cost to participate is five dollars. The yoga class is in the middle of the city so it's really cool to see the skyline. The benefits of yoga help both instant gratification and also transformation. Both are important for your body. Yoga does more than burn calories and tone muscles. It is a total mind-body workout that combines strengthening and stretching poses with deep breathing and relaxation. The crowd that comes out to this class aren't always your typical yogis from the studio. Um, there's a lot of first-time students, a lot of people that, you know, um, want to have a drink and enjoy the city view and have a good time. So it really connects people from all aspects of community and it's empowering. There are more than 100 different forms of yoga. Some are fast-paced and intense. Others are gentle and relaxing. To find out more about Rooftop 210 and how to have a relaxing time, visit their website at rooftop210.com. Exercise is not the only thing you can do on the roof. You can wine, dine, and overlook the Catawba River. Reporter Jacqueline Fuller tells us about a new local restaurant just 10 minutes from campus. Looking for a spot to relax, have a drink with friends with an amazing view, or perhaps a location to hold a party? 
Plum House is a fine dining restaurant where you can select your dining experience. This year. Um, the building itself was, the, hence the name of the restaurant, an old pump house. Uh, it was built in the 1940s to supply water to a nearby textile plant. Uh, our owners were had the great idea of, of turning it into a restaurant. They purchased it in uh, 2014 and started the renovation project. After two long years of, of renovations, uh, we, we finally opened up in uh, March of early this year. So. The Pump House restaurant contains three floors that guests can enjoy. The third floor is a main dining area where you have a choice of dining inside or on the patio. The fourth floor is used for nightly dining or private events, and its most significant feature, the rooftop bar. You must hit the uh, rooftop bar and watch the sunset. Uh, the service is great. The food and beverages are fantastic. It's a uh, destination dining at its finest and it's great for the city of Rock Hill. I'm a, my wife and I are big, big fans of, uh, of what's going on. Jacqueline Fuller, Winthrop Close-Up. The Pump House is located at the Riverwalk just off of Cherry Road, making itself known on the map. Ashley Briggs joins us now and she brings us some of Close Up's lighter stories. Ashley? That's right. People need to know not everything in the world is bad. To lighten your mood, we will visit a local brewery for some beer, food, and music. And I'll take you to the Fall Festival, coming up next on the Best of Winthrop Close Up. Welcome back to Winthrop Close Up. I'm Ashley Briggs. Steel drums, Hispanic food, and Latin mocktails took students on an adventure through Latin America and Rock Hill. Reporter Victor Volius packs his bags and gets ready for the trip. October is National Hispanic Heritage Month, and students came out to salute to celebrate the Hispanic culture. The event coordinator explains why bringing this event was important. It's important to bring to campus because we want to celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month. We thought the Afro-Caribbean band would be a good feel to have the students have some fun while also having an educational lesson on the background of all the drums. Pan. Pan is another name for a steel drum. That's why the band is called Pantasia. Audience members ate Hispanic food like quesadillas, drank Latin mocktails, and participated in a limbo contest. But they also learned about the steel drum. Um, one of the things that we do when we travel around and perform is we like to educate the audience about the history and culture of the music in Trinidad. We like for people to understand the instrument of the steel drum and historically how it came about. Not only was the event educational, but it was also entertaining. Um, it was a lot of fun. The food was good. Like, I learned a lot about the instruments, too, and where they came from. I mean, it was just lit. For the audience members, this event was a learning experience and helped them relax. Victor Volius went them close up. To find more events to celebrate National Hispanic Month in Rock Hill, visit www.oldrock.com. To further celebrate, Old Town Rock Hill hosted its first annual craft beer festival. The individuals who created this event wanted to raise funds for the historic building in Rock Hill. Different breweries came to the festival to let the community try their beer. One of the vendors explains why business is good for the community. We, we think we're, we're the perfect thing for this community. We have uh, great food, great beer. And uh, this is just another event to show Rock Hill that we care. Along with the craft beer, there was a live band that also helped people have fun. The purpose of the event was to bring a tradition of craft beer festivals down in Rock Hill for now and the future. It was festival season in the York County community. As the fall season approaches, local farms are having fall festivals for people of all ages. I had the chance to go to Black Peach Farm and slide into the new season. Winthrop Soar held a 30-minute workout class in honor of healthy aging for the month of September. Together and bring them down. Well, September is Healthy Aging Month, so they gave me the idea that just because certain people are a certain age, you shouldn't stop exercising or getting out and working out, so we will bring the workout to them. Sit to be Fit started as a low-impact aerobics class at the YMCA, but the class changed so seniors can exercise while sitting down. 
One student says she is passionate about socializing with the elderly, so she had to be here. Well, I know from experience that most people don't come and visit the elderly, so to get to interact with them, get them excited, and to work out at the same time is like, it's rewarding for me and them. AgentCare.com suggests three 30-minute workouts for the elderly. Upper body workouts, leg workouts, and to help cope with arthritis, crumble a bag. All of this is helpful because the more you move, the more active you are, the better your system is because you keep everything working. If you sit still all the time, you just get stiff. Families were able to pick their pumpkins, pet animals, and experience farm life at Black Peach Farm. To learn more about what Black Peaches Farm has to offer throughout the year, you can visit blackpeachesandbakery.com. You know, I really had a great time at the first beer craft festival that Rock Hill put on. It was very entertaining. Yeah, but we'll all have to go next year. <laughs> yeah, we'll all have to go next year. It'll be really fun. I really enjoyed interacting with the kids on the slides and everything. It really put me into the fall festival spirit. Yeah. Yeah, it was really good. Can we just talk about Young O Primo? That was probably the most interesting interview I've ever done. <laughs> yeah, very <laughs> interesting. <laughs> Nobody's buying his music. <laughs> <laughs> Overall, it was a really good spot. Yeah, yeah, it was really good working with everybody and I had a great time. All right, thank you for joining us this semester. Keep watch for more of Close Up on Facebook and Twitter at Winthrop Close Up. We'll see you next time. <laughs>